Hello, Internet, and welcome to another episode of That's All I Have to Say About That. As always, I'm your host, Stephen Mackey. Today we're talking about Donald Trump's tax reform, something that seems to have made liberals more angry than paying taxes itself. Now you may be wondering, why are we talking about this now? Well, two reasons really. First, we're starting to see some of the impacts of these tax cuts and changes to the tax system. And second, listeners have asked me to do an episode highlighting some of the good that Donald Trump has done since he has taken office. Yes, liberals, try not to spit your kale smoothie all over your keyboard when you hear this, but Donald Trump's tax plan might not have been calculated and passed with the intent to singularly destroy every aspect of the economy while giving everything to the rich. Now, I'm not going to tell you whether it's overall good or not, because that would be so much to discuss. But I do want to focus in on it closing some strong loopholes. Today, we're going to be focusing on the tale of two companies, adjusting to these new tax laws. So first, let's talk about GE, a company that used to pay less in corporate taxes than the cash-only Chinese restaurant on my block. The company that touts we bring good things to light has been very good about shielding its profits from U.S. tax collectors. GE had profits of $14.2 billion in 2010, $5 billion of that made in the United States. But the company's expected U.S. tax bill, a grand total of zero dollars. That was reported six years ago and the story hasn't changed much. Who would have thought that a company that named themselves General Electric would have been sketchy? So what does your company do? Eh, General Electric stuff. You know, aviation, refrigerators, renewable energy, you get the idea. Anyways, the company might not have gotten the memo that Trump's taxes were a handout to the rich because... 3% loss on GE stock right now. The company just announced it's going to take a $6.2 billion charge in the most recent quarter on its insurance operations. GE lost $6.2 billion on its GE capital insurance operations. But what does it have to do with taxes? Well, what the report didn't mention was that according to USA Today, GE's CEO announced the $6.2 billion charge, which he said is equivalent to $7.5 billion under the new 21% federal corporate tax rate. Oh man, from paying no tax to $1.3 billion? That's rough. Actually, it gets even worse for them because according to Bloomberg Gadfly, their tax rate in 2016 was negative 5.1%, meaning that the US government was paying them 5.1%. If large companies are making a profit off your corporate tax income laws, the system definitely needs a comprehensive tax reform. That same article confirmed that their new effective tax rate will be 21%, which means that they got a corporate tax income cut in the same way that clicking on that pop-up that guarantees you'll make 50k a year from your home actually got you that coveted job. Now I realize that this is a very weird way of advocating for Trump's tax plan. It hurts big businesses, especially after it was announced that... <laughs> Big change is afoot for General Electric. The 125-year-old American staple is considering a breakup. Man, Trump can't even do a good job helping big business. Additionally, the article said that GE is expecting to pay a $3.4 billion charge in connection with repatriation of overseas earnings and deferred taxes. Which brings us to our second company of the night, Apple, which really brought revolutions in computing and tax evasion. In the past, there was a great tax loophole for companies that worked abroad. The US would only charge taxes on money once it was brought back to the US, while countries like Ireland would charge money based on where the headquarters were. So, if you're not headquartered in Ireland but move your money there without bringing it to the US, you don't have to pay any taxes. This zany loophole led to a 26% increase in GDP in 2015. I mean, who knows what this does to GDP per capita? Because, of course, a lot of this is being influenced by companies inverting into Ireland. Yes. Their profits yes. then look as if exactly. they're being created in that Irish yeah. economy. And actually, they're not really linked. No. The Irish economy was booming because companies were moving billions of dollars there. Now, that's a tax policy that can get some GDP growth going. Unfortunately for them, after Trump's tax bill, things changed. Apple has long been criticized for its huge cash pile of some $250 billion that it made through its foreign subsidiaries but refused to repatriate to the U.S. in order to avoid paying U.S. taxes. That's 94% of its total cash. 
Under the new tax bill passed at the end of last year, Apple and other multinationals got what they long wanted, a reduction in the tax rate on those holdings from 38% to 15.5%. However, Apple has to pay that 15.5% whether it repatriates the money or not. Oh man, sorry Ireland, but Apple's Irish headquarters just disappeared faster than an unattended pint of Guinness at one of your bars. Things might be even worse for Apple and other companies who kept money abroad though, because CNN Money reports... Imagine getting slapped with a bill for $14.6 billion in back taxes. That's exactly what happened to Apple today, but don't feel too bad for them. We found out they've only been paying 0.005% on their effective corporate tax rate. Oh no, a well, $14.6 billion tax charge? That's like 10 golden Apple watches. Honestly, I'm surprised anyone thought Republicans could make this tax plan worse. So now I want to get into a slightly different question, because while I am talking about expanding government revenue by lessening taxes on a larger pool of money, in the case of the estimated $3.1 trillion overseas that's going to be returning to America, where is it going to be going? Well, if you guessed American jobs, then I have some beachfront property in Nevada I would love to sell you. That said, this money is estimated not to go to the CEOs and leadership either, but rather, Apple's cash will go towards repurchasing their stocks. Apple, why do you have to be so darn fiscally responsible? You just got a few hundred billion dollar windfall and you're thinking, hmm, I should pay down my debts. Go out, have some fun, buy yourself a nice company or some domestic manufacturing. That said, before I get a barrage of anger in the comments, Apple did announce... The company also announced it will open a new campus in the US, hire 20,000 more employees, and spend $350 billion over the next five years. However, it's not clear whether the expansion plans are new, and Apple hasn't announced any changes to its manufacturing model, which is based around Asian factories. So who knows, there might be some growth in there too. Wow, totally even forgot to mention that argument, despite the fact that economic growth was the RNC's go-to line before Donald Trump invented the term fake news. So here's my question. If all this money and good stuff is coming in, why are we hearing... And I think the, really the most problematic thing, well, the two things. One is that it's going to add to the deficit. It's going to add to the national debt. 1.5 trillion. We hope that that's made up through uh, additional growth. Where are we spending this money? Well, a lot of news organizations report that it's through a corporate tax cut, because that's simple. But the majority of that $1.5 trillion price tag is based on personal income tax cuts for the wealthy and a pass-through loophole. Now, this is a little confusing, but basically, if you own a small business, you can declare its profits as your personal income without paying a corporate tax rate. <laughs> Nothing can go wrong there. You may be thinking, well that's great, but how many people really do that? Well, according to the Brookings Institute, 96% of all corporations are operated that way. Now, the real expensive part of this tax reform is the income tax cut from 39.6% to 25% for high income pass through businesses like hedge funds, law firms, partnerships, and a certain Trump organization that would save Donald Trump, according to his last public tax return in 2005, $11 million a year. So there is a difference between corporate income tax cuts and pass-through income taxes. No wonder a certain president wanted to cut corporate taxes. While the Republicans battle it out, the president made a big move to win votes in November, today unveiling a plan to bring American jobs back to U.S. soil, proposing lowering the tax rate for corporations in America from 35% to 28%. So this leads to one final question. From a regulator's standpoint, what's the difference between the pass-through loophole and a corporate tax cut? I mean, in theory, it all sounds like the same idea. But, as I said earlier, pass-through income allows an owner to just kind of skip the newly established corporate taxes on business income and write it off as personal income. Then, when you factor in personal income tax cuts that this reform includes, Donald Trump is just making it rain on the one percenters, who, statistically speaking, get more than 50% of all pass-through business income. Luckily, that's all I have to say about that, it's a pass-through company. But it doesn't matter much because a 20% corporate tax on zero is still zero. Thank you, and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I hope you enjoyed that last video. 
For more episodes of That's All I Have to Say About That, click here. Please click here to subscribe and like below. And if you're really a fan, you can join our Facebook group. <laughs> it's just a party over there.